Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one, between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. With that, let's head inside to Fort Field in Detroit. We're standing by are the two men who will bring you this one, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With you from the booth, Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis. A CDR matchup here. A couple of teams last year that were really pretty similar, both under 500, both missed the playoffs, and they both think that they can turn things around in 2019. Yeah, how about 2018, though? A case of the haves and the have-nots. In 16-game seasons in the NFL, for the first time last year, no one finished 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, you know that in baseball, basketball, other sports, turnarounds can take three, four, five years. In football, could just be a few months. Here's the punter, Sam Martin, now ready to get us started. And we are underway from Ford Field. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Buccaneers heading out. It's the fifth-year man, Jameis Winston, in charge. Big key for Jameis this year, just finding a way to avoid those turnovers. They've been his undoing during his tenure in Tampa. It's no secret. 14 interceptions again last year, plus seven fumbles in just nine games played. So first and 10 now from the 30. Off the play fake, Winston. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. So let's all work together on this one because it's natural to just watch the football. I want all of us to watch the center of this offensive line, the center and the two guards. They've got to be able to control the point of attack, and they didn't do such a good job on that last play. Plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. They'll have to take advantage of that and start to make progress. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. They go play action. Winston. And it's incomplete. And the starting crew defensively for Detroit. As the Detroit Lions continue to rebuild their defense, they were so excited about the opportunity to acquire defensive end Trey Flowers from New England, who always put on big performances in the playoffs and in Super Bowls. And now the Lions looking forward to seeing that game in and game out. Seven and a half sacks is his career high. They'd love to see that number get to double digits. So now an early third and 10 here on their opening drive. From the gun, Winston. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. Fourth down, and the Bucs trot out the former 49er Bradley Pinion to punt it. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. Forty-nine yard punt, five on the return. And the Lions will take over. Lions offense coming out on the field here and a lot of talk about their quarterback position because on Thanksgiving, Matthew Stafford, the back injury, Jeff Driscoll, hamstring injury. 
So David Blau gets the start, and you would have thought the talk on Thanksgiving if it was going to be about a Purdue quarterback would have been about Drew Brees, but Blau got all the hype. Yeah, not Len Dawson? No. Not Bob Greasy? Not Bob Greasy either. Drew Brees. Yes. I like it. Well, here, how about this, too? David Blau was undrafted, okay? Signed with Cleveland in preseason. The Lions always liked him, didn't get a chance to draft him, had a need at quarterback, and made a trade for David Blau in preseason. Now, how often does an undrafted free agent get traded for? Rare, right? It happened, and it paid off. I thought he played well in the Thanksgiving Day game against the Bears. Didn't get as much help as he needed, but now he'll be the starter going forward, I believe. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Now Scarborough, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs, but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Back to throw here. And James has it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards on the play. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. A first carry for the converted wideout, J.D. McKissick. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. The starting 11 defensively for Tampa Bay. It's easy to go back to the time when Dominican Sue entered the NFL, and he was an absolute force right from the beginning. But it's been fun to watch his career progress, and I'm starting to see a little more finesse in his game, although I'm not sure he'd like me to describe it that way. But you see the agility, you see the movement, and of course, he can bull rush when he needs to to get to the quarterback. Second and five. And he finds Danny Amendola. First down for the Lions on a nice pickup of 18 yards. Completion, second and ten. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. They'll look to throw here, and that will be incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, 
they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through, and the Lions are going to take a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The partner is Tampa readies for their next offensive series here. They're five and seven right now. They've won two straight. So we weren't thinking about them as maybe a dark horse playoff wild card team late, but do they have a chance now all of a sudden? I'd love to say yes, but the answer to me is still no. They've been so inconsistent all year long and Jameis Winston had a nice game in their last win. No turnovers. That's the key, right? There's good Jameis when that happens, and then there's bad Jameis who will put up big numbers throwing the ball, but he may throw three interceptions and fumble twice, and that's going to cost your team. I just don't think that they have everything that you need to make the run necessary, especially with home against Indianapolis who will be desperate in that game. At Detroit, that seems okay. And then the end with two games at home against Houston and Atlanta. Houston will need it because of the division title will be at stake. And Atlanta, they may want to give their head coach a victory on the way out the door. You mentioned Jameis Winston. That, that offense through 12 games, they've scored 340 points, the most in Bucks history. It's just, at times, the defense has had trouble stopping people. They have, and Jameis and the offense haven't helped at all because while they've scored the 340, how many turnovers have they had? Yeah. Put the defense in a bad spot. That's the issue for Tampa Bay. Until they can get complimentary football going where the offense helps the defense and vice versa, you're going to be an almost 500 team. For the Lions, an extra DB in the game now here on third down. Working out of the gun, Winston. And he couldn't hang on. Almost an interception there defensively. Instead, it brings up fourth. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Lions offense coming back out here, CD. This is a team that is struggling right now in this season. Five straight losses, so now they're 3-8-1. and one. Most recent defeat in that traditional Thanksgiving Day game against Chicago, 24-20. to 20. It's now three straight years that the Lions have lost there at home on Turkey Day. Yeah, and the last two years have been to the Bears, and that's how the Turkey Day tradition started in 1934 against that team from Chicago. And the Bears won that game 19 to 16. So I guess the tradition actually continues, unfortunately, for them. I would have expected the Lions, when they were 2 0 and 1 earlier this season, to still be in the playoff race at this point. Injuries have played a factor in it, and they've lost so many close games. Throughout the year, the Lions have led in just about every game they've played. Hard for them to close the deal. Officially, nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and 10. Let them get it. This is Scarborough. 
And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The Bucks with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. They'll drop to throw. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And that is incomplete. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Here's Sam Martin now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now, heading back out onto the field. They've had it twice, they've punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Ready? Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. The second-year man from USC, this is Ronald Jones. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Second down now. It's Jones. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. Third and short yardage, Winston. Complete, he finds Brave. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That's good for a Buccaneer first, a pickup of 12 yards. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. down throw for Winston. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he goes down, but not before Let's getting go. this Let's inside go. the 25. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And that's the first connection, the number one overall pick in 2015, finding the number seven pick in 2014 in Evans. And what a great target Mike Evans is for Jameis Winston. Winston's a pretty accurate thrower, but that catch radius that Evans provides, that makes him that much more dangerous. Ready. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Looking for Perriman there, he's got him. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. 
On play action, Winston. And he's got it. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Bucs have taken the lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Come on, set, 10 2 stop. Watch the slant. <laughs> on play action, they'll throw. Try to lay one up deep, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. From the 21, it's second and 10. Second and 10. This is caught by his tight end, Logan Thomas. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. It's getting for when we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers too. Yeah, yeah tight end one-handed catches. They're kind of like wide receiver one-handed catches nowadays. Just not right. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And it's third and five. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. And he's got Amendola on the connection. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. This quarterback now... Six of ten in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. They run. This is Scarborough pushing forward for three up to the 48. 
They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way, lost yardage. No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's gonna feel good and look great in film. The Lions on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. He'll look to throw. James has got it, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime previews. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. I'm Brandon Gauner. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. They'll set up a throw. It's caught, Jones. And they'll get this down to the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's gonna have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. The Lions into the red zone for the first time. They've got a first and goal from the 10 yard line. Looking to throw and that is caught on the right sideline but out of bounds says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Now back to throw. The quick slant caught, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They were stopped last time from the one. Now here's another try on third and goal. They'll run for it with Bo Scarborough. Uh-uh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. Crater's kick is good. 
And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. That will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. Fielded about a yard deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. Second quarter here, he has only one catch, but they have the lead. you got to think there's going to be more involved at some point. That's what you would expect, but sometimes what defenses do to take away a player of his magnitude, it costs them in other areas. And right now, with them losing, they may have to change their focus, and maybe he will open up a little bit more as the game goes on. Yeah, well, so far, just the single catch. On first and 10, Winston. And yeah, this is caught by Evans. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. From the gun, Winston. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The ex-Iowa Hawkeye, Mike Daniels, in for the sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. Final play of the half here, Winston. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll make it third down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to float this over the middle deep. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we're at halftime with our score 7-6 in a tough-fought first half. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has the look of a game that could very well go down to the wire. Just one point separating these two clubs at the break. But they're ready for the second half, and we are too as we'll kick it right back out to Brandon and Charles. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. 
The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Come on, set. 18, Gator. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Second and three. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The sack by the Super Bowl champion and pro bowler, Jason Pierre-Paul. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? Yeah, it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. He'll drop to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Detroit. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt, go. not too shabby. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Uh, CD, with that incompletion, let's look at some of the big games week 13. So these are ones that our crew probably think of the biggest four. Let's rank them one to four as far as how big they are and what they mean. Baltimore at Buffalo, San Fran at New Orleans, KC at New England, Seattle at the Rams. How would you rank those? What do you think? Well, this is going to sound self-serving since I'm working San Francisco and New Orleans, but to me that's the number one game because the number one seed in the NFC will be determined that week for that moment, mm -hmm. okay? The winner of that becomes the number one seed. I think the number two game, Seattle at the Rams, because Seattle's trying to maintain pace with San Francisco or become the number one team in the NFC West, and the Rams have to have it if they have any designs of making the playoffs. The number, it's caught inside the 25. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 55 yards. That's a heck of a way to convert on third and long, and he showed a lot of trust in his receiver. And that trust was justified because he went up and got the football and converted on a down. You shouldn't. Third and long like that, that's supposed to be an incompletion at the least. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. They'll throw again, Winston. That's caught by Howard. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. 
That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Again, it's Winston. Open man is Howard, the tight end. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. And Brandon, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line. Because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. They go back to the ground, this time Barber. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. So they're back at the seven now for third and goal. Working out of the gun, Winston. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And Gay knocks this one through. And they bump the lead up to four now at 10-6. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Ready. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Here we go. Here we go. Ready, ready. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Second and six. That's complete to Nauta, the tight end. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. 
He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Detroit. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Jameis Winston and company heading back onto the field now. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. The completion good for three, and it's second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. A run with Ogan Bowale. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And he's got a man. It's the tight end Howard complete. And they work this out past the 25. third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Hey. Jameis now. A perfect 8 for 8 to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. They'll run it with Jones. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down and four, Winston. And he finds Howard complete. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading. Mike Evans, he's going to go. And he takes it all the way down to the three. It's a big play. Winston to Evans, 56 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one.
So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. This is caught by Dare Ogunbowale, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. He'll get this to Ogan Bawale out of the backfield. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Here's Winston. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A five-yard touchdown catch as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17-6. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Get it. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw left side complete. It's James. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Gotta get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's a second and seven. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen.
down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that one that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there and it's second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Again, it's Jones. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it bottom line they want to keep this clock rolling so they'll take that one right there they just want to keep falling forward and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home the bucks on third down they're at 50 percent four for eight this is third and eight two minutes left to play in this football game here on ea sports So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They're going to run the jet sweep on third down. And they snap him short of the first as he can only get to the 20. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. Gay's kick is good. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. So now the Lions down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Kenny Galladay is intended receiver. 
but it'll be second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. They will run it. It's McKissick. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. in there and the Lions have a first down and at his size he's a smaller back you can get him to football he can kind of get lost make hurry, someone hurry. miss it's good for him yeah it's great for him I like what you said there sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit but get him out in the open field into some space that plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are you know make him make someone miss in the open field and now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Hey, let's go. So here we go. The offense is going to stay out there. They're going for it on fourth and eight. Back to throw here. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense will take over right at midfield. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And the Lions quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. Winston goes ahead, takes the knee, and that should be all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, they did in this one. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. 
Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long, everyone, from Ford Field.